Hello and welcome back to Informatica World, live here from Las Vegas in 2024. We're wrapping the day up and we have such an interesting, interesting panel to go through with you guys because I think one of the biggest things going on that we can't get away from is really climate, sustainability, and how it's really having an impact. One of the funny things is at the root of that is a lot of data and how data gets used and what a better conference to be at to understand that than here. So I want to welcome on board uh, Jason Lindauer, who's the Senior Director, Global Head of ESG Products from Dun & Bradstreet. We have Levent Egrin, who's Global Chief ESG Sustainability Strategist and Global Head of ESG Strategic Alliance Partnerships at Informatica. And we also have James Sizemore, who's the Chief Strategist Insurance for Informatica. Thanks for coming on, guys. And as we get you know, the voice of God here over us, you know, <laughs> telling everybody that they're going to be going to a keynote really soon, I think one of the things that really we want to talk through here is how data really impacts ESG. And I think, again, you're a customer using Informatica, gathering a lot of data to really help people understand what's going on from a climate change perspective, because especially in things like insurance, there's a lot of impact going on there. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Climate is a big data problem. I mean, the, the economy, the world needs to get rid of about 900 billion tons of carbon in the atmosphere to get below pre-industrial levels. So that's a huge amount and you need big data, AI to help achieve this problem. Also, companies are faced with threats from climate change around their supply chain, around their operations, as well as being able to um, comply with new regulations around climate change. You've seen the SEC enact uh, new disclosures around climate change. The state of California, uh, EU, other countries have followed different regulatory frameworks as well. ISSB, International Sustainability Standards Board, is one that's taken over from the task force for climate-related financial disclosures. So all these are coming together from supply chain risks to risks from companies' operations. We've seen NOAA has uh, calculated that there's been more than $60 billion plus disasters over the past five years that have costed uh, the economy and companies more than $100 billion in losses. So this is a huge amount that, and a problem that companies need to be aware of and figure out how to solve it. Yeah. And, and I think again, having been in the insurance, not on that, on the, on, on that, that side of things, but on the, uh, on the casualty, prop, not property side, when we used to have actuaries, and this is, I mean, this is like 2000, so you know, we would sit there with old AI and you know, no gen AI at that point in time and things of this nature, and trying to figure out and using ML, which was you know, what old AI is, I guess you could say, and, and trying to figure out, okay, what's the life expectancy of somebody and things of that nature. How are you seeing, you know, from an Informatica perspective, how people are changing and using different techniques now as they approach that? Um, well, I would say this, uh, to your point, ESG requirements are either in place or emerging in 191 countries globally. I think all of the G7, most of the G20, um, coming soon to a town near you, right? So um, from an insurance perspective, it is very much on the radar. Um, and you know, and from Informatica's perspective, the insurance industry response to climate change is really our opportunity to help carriers sort of shore up their legacy data estates so that they can respond gamely, if you will, to climate change by offering modern insurance products to their customers fit for these times. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it and I go, I, I know, you know, with hurricanes in Florida, you know, I think we were talking about the wildfires in California, yeah. and, you know, it, it, it's, there is more and more challenges from an insurance perspective as we, you know, go out and do this. And as you said, it's, it's a big data problem. And how are, how are people really looking at, again, 
trying to understand this and gather all that data to do that modeling and really get a better feel because it, it seems like big data is a big word and the more data doesn't necessarily mean better outcomes because you have to get through it. You have to prep the data. You have to understand it. You get a catalog and have metadata and be able to understand that entire scope. How is that really play? Maybe I'll take it first and then I'll hand off to Levent. So what DMB has done is com combined our world class data hierarchy around companies with climate data really focus on the perils and timeframes that the regulators want companies to report on and the uh, bank regulators as well are requiring many of the largest banks to do climate stress testing. So we incorporate that climate data from historical risks to current risks, short-term forecasts, as well as long-term forecasts. And that basically complies with the regulator's needs to say you need to report on what your acute risks are, near-term risks like wildfires and floods, as well as chronic risks like uh, sea level rise that are going to impact the company over the next 20 to 30 years. And we combine that with DMB's you know, almost 300 million global corporate entities. We're able to identify risks at specific company location levels where we have a geolocation identif identified to any company. We can actuate what that risk is, as well as understand what the resilience of that company is based on its risk profile. Do they pay their bills on time? Are they at risk for delinquency? Looking at what is the building structure? Is this building made of wood, which is more uh, apt to you know, go down in flames from wildfires? You know, is it a 10-story building or one-story building that comes into play if, uh, for flood risks as well? So all these things come together, we're able to say, okay, you have your climate risk for a particular location and how that applies to its supply chain as well as to the parent headquarters company, and then also applying what's the resilience of that entity to come up with an overall climate exposure. Yeah. And I guess I'll uh, take it from where you left off, Jason. So, um, you know, certainly when we look at the ESG disclosures themselves, and you've alluded to this, uh, James, um, you know, they, they all center around your climate risks. And what we're really excited about is making this climate risk insights data available as part of Informatica's IDMC for ESG sustainability, where we can go even beyond use cases such as the ones that we've exp explained in insurance, where we can even see in a company's supply chain which of the providers or suppliers are going to be um, facing a, one of those perils um, in, in the next 30 days so that you can actually prepare for that, whether it's you know, sourcing from an alternate supplier so that you can continue producing your products, um, or to uh, Jason's point, you know, looking at a time horizon of 2050, um, you know, the use cases that, that unlocks for businesses is really quite exciting and uh, opens up a lot of innovation so that this doesn't just become something about risk, but it's also an opportunity to innovate. Yeah. I love that. Can I jump in on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. First of all, there's some real practical application there, Levent. You talked about it, but insur for insurance at least, carriers who want to accurately price to peril, right? Yeah. They want to match price to peril. This sort of foundation of this sort of data is, is, is intimately important to that exercise. Or carriers who, again, I mentioned earlier, want to offer modern insurance products. So if I'm a carrier and I want to offer building-specific, sensor-based, parametric insurance, what you fellas are talking about supports that. If I'm a carrier and I want to offer a digital platform where I can take real-time data and advanced analytics and then use that to provide sustainability services to my commercial lines customers. This is a direct application to that. So from a practical implementation perspective or applied ESG, I'm excited about what you fellas are talking about and I think it's going to be very beneficial to the insurance industry. Yeah, I mean, I could see it like you were saying, Levent, that going across like for CPG and retail and others as well, I mean, that not only just insurance, but to your point, uh, my previous job uh, for 
unknown reasons, uh, the company built the uh, data center in the basement of the parking garage in <laughs> an area called uh, the Seaport District of Boston, which is all landfill. And it's floods regularly. So when you start to go in there, and I owned DR and business continuity, and when you started to look at it and go, hey, what's the risk of this flooding? It floods once a year. And <laughs> oh, so how do, you, how do you build the, oh, now the PDUs and everything and the batteries were one floor up, still in the parking garage, still below, but it was, and it was a weeping bath, you know, bathtub. Okay, what, you know, what takes the, you know, powers the pumps out of that? Okay, we had a generator, but it wasn't the life and safety generator. So to your point, I mean, I think taking these all into account and bringing that data, so, are, so is Informatica going to actually provide that out through the cloud-based system so that people can actually apply that to their, their models, I guess you could say? Yeah, so um, you, know, you gave lots of industry examples there, right? Certainly, so um, as Informatica, we allow and enable our customers to manage their data in a single unified platform where we will then be enriching that data with climate risk insights from Dun & Bradstreet to then be able to get all of these additional dimensions to enable them to have those scenarios where they can then figure out what is the right course of action that we need to take. And certainly in the insurance side, there's opportunities to then uh, perhaps even offer uh, premium discounts for those companies who have taken those mitigating actions to p potentially make their homes more resilient to certain perils. I mean, there, there's so many different uh, opportunities for innovation there. Sure, and that, that aligns to the general rise of predict and prevent in the insurance industry, sort of a shift from the old detect and repair to now predict and prevent. So all of this aligns, I think, very well. Yeah, and, and when you look ahead and how this all plays in, because again, you know, everybody's talking Gen AI, but this is really the underpinnings of being able to potentially help uh, an insurance agent quickly understand, okay, these are the things that connect back based on the data, here's the other things. It's almost a you know, mixture of exper experts type of thing where it's mm. AI and Gen AI to get to human in the loop type bot stuff. Is, is that where you see this really going from an insurance perspective as well? Um, well, I think generally from an insurance perspective, sure. You know, using AI, for example, we see use cases already starting to develop to detect fraud all the way back to first notice of loss. Essentially to um, streamline the claims process, turning the claims experience itself into a competitive advantage. So there's a lot of practical application for AI and, and particularly I think in the, the world of ESG, but I would defer to you fellows for that. Yeah, I mean, just to expand on your example there, imagine if you could actually predict when the claims are going to come in because you know yeah. where those extreme weather events are going to take place. So you could actually gear up your call centers to be able to cater for that. And um, that's just one example on the sort of uh, you know, underwriting and insurance side. But then what about on the portfolio side of the house? Yeah, right? that's a great So point. what exposures do you have uh, as an insurance company? I mean, and, and that resilience question really applies to every other industry vertical as well. Healthcare life sciences, what does this mean for my hospitals? You know, as a healthcare provider for my provider network, who are the ones that are going to be hit? Do they have the resilience to be able to bounce back? And that's where we use DMB's firmographic data. So there's a lot that can be done with this capability. Yeah, I just, one additional point, I think, you know, just enhancing the ability to predict climate events can be greatly enhanced by the use of AI and big data. Right now, we can predict probably two to four weeks, but beyond that is, is just a guessing game. And the long-term models, even, you know, when you go out to 2050, 2100, we can see the trends, but AI, especially the generative AI, LLMs, and transformers are going to help improve that predictability going out into the future. 
Yeah, and I think we're going to need AI to predict the actual impact of AI on ESG as well. But that's we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll table that for for another time because it's definitely uh, you know when you start to look at the EU and some of the studies that they're doing over there about you know, like I think they were saying that all of the AI right now is uh, using the effective kilowatts of what Germany yes. is outputting in a year, which is just absolutely craziness. So, but you know I think this is something we'll dig into you know further. I really appreciate you guys coming on board and helping me uh, close out, you know, day two here at Informatica World. Thanks for being on board. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And thank you for watching theCUBE here. We're the leader in tech news and analysis. Stay tuned for more on day three from Informatica World 2024.